Project 3.2.3, SAR ADC completed. With the completion of the SAR ADC, we are able to see how analog signals can be converted into digital binary signals and used by systems such as microcontrollers. So this is the completed SAR ADC build. Um, we've, kept, we've kept the same R2R ladder from the previous circuit. The clock from the first stage of the circuit is set up over here. And we've added um, the successive approximation register over here in these D latches. Um, we've added more to the R2R ladder DAC with these AND gates. We've added the digital display over here in these LEDs and the control circuit with this latch as well. We've also um, made some improvements to the analog input over here with this potentiometer. So <clears throat> as you can see, when I turn this potentiometer, you're going to see the digital display. <clears throat> um, you're going to see it change as I decrease the voltage that's getting to it. You'll see that it represents a smaller and smaller binary value. Half the voltage gone, more than half, more than half, all zero. So that's that would be zero volts. I've also made some uh, HID implementations to the circuit as well, such that uh, if I were to flick this switch over here and turn this potentiometer, the binary display would not change until I toggle it with this switch over here. There we go. And if I were to do it again over here, an example continued. And I can do this as many times as I want. But this circuit over here, uh, converting this analog signal to these uh, LED displays is basically the backbone for how uh, microcontrollers and other digital systems process analog signals, which is a critical element in many embedded systems that use um, analog signals as resistors or uh, voltage dividers uh, to evaluate situations that they are present in. Now this is Mitsuru Yamada's circuit diagram for the SAR ADC project that he made on Hackaday. Um, I see this circuit diagram best divided into five different sections. The clock consisting of the A-stable clock up here and the control circuit. Um, the second stage being the analog input consisting of the potentiometer and sample and hold circuit. The third being the successive approximation registers and uh, ADC comparator. The fourth being the R2R ladder and the fifth being the digital display. Now I've done my best to organize this circuit uh, so that the devices and the connections would be apparent to represent the categories that they're part of. So I'm going to go over a quick summary of what each of these five phases does. So over here, we've got the clock and the control circuit being these two devices up here. And what they basically do is they provide the clock pulses for each individual successive approximation register. That being the SAR activates in a certain order with each D latch, um, one each one of these red wires goes to a D latch. There's seven of them in total. Operates uh, at a different time from every other D latch. Um, and as they do, uh, they feed into these AND chips, uh, which take one signal from the SAR and one signal from the prior control circuit output to that SAR um, in order to create the R2R DAC value on these resistors here. Over here, as, as the control circuit reaches its final bit when it doesn't have an SAR to reach, it instead toggles uh, the sample and hold circuit here and resets the rest of the program, clearing all the information on these registers and, and this register as well. Um, and in that clearing process, it's able to evaluate a new analog signal uh, coming from this potentiometer. Um, the, the ADC over here is fed into the data lines of the SAR, such that each time the SAR is, one SAR is clocked, um, it's the value from the, the data from the ADC is fed into the next rung of the R2R ladder. 
and with each iteration that this happens, um, as I've stated in previous projects, the resolution of the R2R ladder gets more and more precise, and it's so precise that you can even see the the digital display here flickering a little bit as um, it's it's balancing between half voltage and approximately 65 or 64 out of 127 um, intervals of voltage between zero and five volts. And if I were to wave my hand around this or tap this potentiometer, you'd see the whole thing flicker as a result of that voltage changing just ever so slightly. Thank you for listening.